Hey guys, welcome back to Home Built and welcome back to day three of my engine build. So uh, let's get into it. All right, so guys, we spent most of the morning uh, running around getting bits and pieces and uh, doing some cleaning and just, just uh, stuff. So now we're actually getting back into uh, working on this and my first task of the day is to actually um, get the oil tubes out of the cam decks here, which means drilling out the, um, the little plugs that they've got on either end and take the oil tubes out so we can clean them. Um, so that's my first task, so let's get into it. So now I've drilled in and tapped the hole. All I need to do is stick this bolt in here and tighten up this bolt and I'll pull the, uh, pull the plug out. All right, so now I've got the plugs out, I need to push out the, uh, the oil tube. It looks something like that. Uh, that's the one out of the other cam towel that we uh, struggled with a second ago, but uh, Neil just got on the, uh, the lathe and we turned up a little, uh, a little fitting. It's basically a plug that sits in the end of, of this so we can just tap it down without actually flaring out the end or damaging it. So let's knock the tube out. And this is why we take them out. I don't know if it, this is gonna focus on it, but there is so much filth and grot all the way through this. And um, basically the next thing to do is to clean it all out and make sure it's nice and clean and uh, doesn't put gunk through my engine. Okay, so I've cleaned up these uh, oiling tubes from inside the uh, cam towers and all I'm gonna go through and do, uh, one of the, uh, the mods that uh, Neil likes to do is, it has, basically this is like a, a spray bar for oil and there's these tiny little holes along here that um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna drill them out just slightly larger, just, just get a little bit more oil up onto the, uh, onto the rockers. So um, that's what we're set up in, here, in the mill here now to do. So I'll go through and drill all these out and then we can look at uh, cleaning it up and moving on. Okay, oil tubes are all drilled, so that means my next task is moving on to gapping rings. And um, basically, I've got a whole bunch of, uh, a whole set of rings here, and, and what Neil did this morning is actually, uh, he actually made up this jig. So instead of fitting the rings into a cylinder each time, um, he's actually measured the cylinder and he actually made up this, uh, uh, this, this jig that it's perfectly the exact same match as the cylinder, so I'm much less likely to damage the Nicosil as I'm, uh, obviously my cylinders have got a nice fresh coating of Nicosil in them, and they're quite likely to chip and scratch and then ruin the Nicosil coating. So this, I can slip the, uh, the rings in and out of, off and on, and it won't damage them. And it also, there's a, there's a groove here so I can fit the feeler gauge in. So I'm just gonna go through and methodically grind down each ring to get the, uh, the gaps correct. It sounds like it's a controversial topic, but um, the gaps we're running on these is um, 16 thou on, uh, on both. In any case, it's a matter of fitting them into the thing, check, and then bring them over to the little ring grinding tool here, which makes things much easier. So let's get into it. All right, so that's one gapped, and uh, basically all do all I was doing is going through, making sure I'm getting um, getting it square on the edge of the ring, so that um, and that, the way to test that is to bring the sides in and make them touch, and make sure they're touching square. And um, another little trick Neil was showing me is is you only take the uh, the edge off of one side. Uh, that's so that you you keep it even. And a way to remember that is he just uh, puts a little text a mark on the edge of one of the rings so you know it's that side, that side up, just in case you're sort of playing around with it and bring it back out and then forget which side you started grinding on. Um, one of the things with uh, grinding rings and in gapping rings is uh, 
I'm a novice at all this, and um, when I first heard that you needed a gap in the rings, I'm thinking, well, why do you want any gap? Wouldn't you want them so they're solid? But uh, that's definitely a no, because um, as the engine gets hot, the rings obviously expand and they come around and touch. So you want it close enough so that it will touch when it gets hot, but you don't want it too close that it's going to, they're gonna to touch and start pushing out against the, uh, the cylinder. So you want to uh, take your time, grind them, and get the, uh, the gaps just right at uh, the tolerances that you particularly want. And uh, these are the ones we want, so there's one down. All right, I've done uh, the other five now, so I'm getting the hang of this, and uh, I'll just take you through the method in which uh, I'm, I'm actually doing this and how this all works. So first step, I've got my new ring. First thing I do is I just put a mark on it, just so I know where I'm grinding it, and I fit it in my jig. And I know most of them are around 0.7 to start with, so I'll just uh, check what the gap is from, from this one. No, this one's a bit tighter. Okay, this one's about five thousandths. So we know we want about 16. So 16 means we have to take 11 thou off, but we'll creep up to that. Move it over here, I've put it in my jig. I've squared it up, make sure it's square against uh, these stoppers so that it uh, cuts nice and square on this uh, grinding edge. And then I'll bring it around until it touches. And it's touching there, so I'll zero out my gauge. And I said, I know that I need to take 11 thou off, I don't want to take it all off in one hit. I want to try and creep up to it. So I'm going to go for maybe around eight, eight thou. All right, let's test that. Oh yeah, that's about a 10. That's a nice, I can just feel some light drag on that. So it's at about 10 now. So I still need to take another six off. So out again and keep doing the process, just working up to it, creeping up to the, the size so I don't overdo it. Perfect. So that is 16th hour. So there is another gaps ring. And that is all of my number one rings gaps. All right, now we're uh, going and attacking the second rings. Um, so the first rings on mine are, um, are, are square edged and uh, basically they could go up either way. So that's why we've marked them so we know which way that we've, uh, we've ground them. These second lot of rings actually have, um, I probably won't be able to pick it up on the camera, but they basically have a step in the bottom which helps, uh, that goes to the, to the bottom of the ring and it helps pull the oil down the, the cylinder or actually in this case, it'd be sideways, but um, but yeah, it's, it, it pulls the uh, the oil um, back, and it's much more to do with oil control. Even though there is a third lot of oil rings that are in there, this is still more to do with oil control, and it actually has a um, a marking on the top of it. I don't know if we're able to see that there. Yeah, you can actually see there's there's the marking. So that marks TS topside, or oh, that's how I'm taking it anyway. That's that is the top. So I'm going to grind off of this opposite edge. So. Um, We'll gap these down now at um, 16 as well. So we're doing 16 on both. All right, let's start gapping. And the, um, the last round, the oil rings, I just have to go through with these and um, I don't actually have to gap them, just making sure they're at minimum of, um, they're at least 15 thou between them but they're generally, uh, they're a bit looser fit anyway. And then the final thing before I'm finished is I need to go through each of these rings that I've ground and just um, with a, uh, a stone is I'm just going over and I'm just making sure I get rid of any little uh, beveled edge. All right, so now it's time to start playing with my very snazzy looking pistons. And I was just going to mention that basically um, you can get these pistons now from, uh, from 
performance developments. They are doing them now, so you can do them as my kit. So this is set a kit for a, uh, um, a 2.8 from a 2.7, so 92 mil pistons. And you can actually, he's actually just uh, made up these new rods. So I missed out because uh, these rods weren't ready, but he's modified my rods. But you can actually get, he's doing it as a kit now, with these pistons and these new rods, and these are, some very nice new Italian made rods that are actually um, their, their performance development's own design. And it's actually quite reasonable. It's sort of, you're looking at sort of similar price range to uh, most aftermarket, you know, Carrillo rods or, uh, you know, and J pistons or other Marlow pistons. It's, it's basically same sort of, uh, sort of prices. And he's doing them currently uh, these and he's um, also developing a, a 3-2 short stroke. So uh, for any of you guys interested in that, and these rods he's doing as replacements for all factory sizes as well. So, and there's, there's definitely a lot more detail, a lot more, um, a lot more work has been gone into this, into this design. So um, yeah, I'm, I'm sort of spewing a mist out, but uh, mine, mine will do, but you can actually do this, what I've done, without as much machining work to uh, get the, the lighter pins and the, all the rest of it. So anyway, uh, my next step now is taking my very snazzy looking pistons and um, measuring them so that we know and we make sure, we triple check that we have the right sizes and measurements through everything and we record it. So um, let's start doing that. Okay, so now I've measured the size of the pistons. Now it's time for me to go through and uh, measure the weights. So I've got uh, my nice shiny new pins here. So I'll pop the, uh, the pin into the piston. And I've got the clips, I'll chuck them inside and I've got a set of rings. I'll sit them on top and I just weighed this one before so it should hopefully balance out the same again. A weight of 475.5 grams. So now I'm going to go through, I've numbered that, these are now going to stay together. Um, this is now designated piston number two, and I'll go through and do all the rest, and um, make sure that they, now they are a matched set, and uh, we have recorded everything so we know the weights of all of we know the, uh, the, the dimensions of all of them. We are keeping track of every single little piece, measured the... Um, the ring gaps are measured on all of them and all recorded and uh, kept for future reference. So let's start weighing some pistons. All right guys, that's another day down. We've got all the, uh, the pistons all weighed, but the issue we have is that there's 0.4 of a gram difference between uh, some of them. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna balance them by coming in tomorrow with the die grinder and just take a little bit off of the heavy ones just to bring them all down so they're all perfectly even. The rods have already been balanced, so that's all already good. Um, so I said it doesn't feel like we got a lot done today, but uh, we did a lot of running around and a lot of uh, busy work. We got to, uh, we moving forward and hopefully tomorrow we can uh, move forward with uh, assembling the pistons and uh, other bits and pieces. That's it for today. Um, for the meetup on Friday, we actually have a, um, uh, a destination in mind. It's a place in Costa Mesa. If you guys have seen my Instagram, you might have seen the, uh, the, uh, the green 911 I saw the other day and it's actually uh, at uh, his shop. So we'll be going there on Friday night. So anybody who's interested, uh, send me a private message either here, Instagram, Facebook, wherever. Um, Alright guys, that's it for another day, so um, please like and subscribe, see you guys.